Hello and welcome in video lecture series Demystifying Blockchain. In today's video, we will look at Merkle tree. In our previous video, we have seen what goes into a Bitcoin block. Particularly, we have seen what goes into a block header, right? There we have seen one field called as Merkle root. In today's video, we will see what is this Merkle root, how Merkle trees are prepared. Finally, we will see a short demonstration on how Merkle trees are built and how verification is carried out, right? So we'll write a short program for that. So we will start with what is a Merkle tree? A Merkle tree is a data structure. It's a binary hash tree. It's basically a tree containing cryptographic hashes. But what is the purpose of using Merkle tree? Merkle trees are used for efficiently summarizing the data, right? And verifying the integrity of large set of data. So have you ever imagined how much of Bitcoin data is currently? It's in multiple hundred gigabytes, right? So how light clients are able to create transactions, right? So without downloading whole of the Bitcoin block data, how the transaction verification is done done and how transaction is being verified among thousands of transactions in very small amount of time the answer to these questions is merkle tree so we will see how large chunk of data is being summarized with the help of merkle trees and how we can verify a transaction in a very short amount of time and efficiently with the help of merkle proofs okay imagine that we have 16 transactions okay so this is transaction A, this is transaction B, this is transaction C, and this this goes on. We have transaction P at last, right? Okay, so we have trans 16 transactions from A to P. So these are the hashes. So we take the SHA-256 hash of this transaction, and this is represented by H of A, and then the transaction B is hashed and this hash is represented by you know HB we take SHA-256 hash of transaction C this is represented by H of C the same goes you know every transaction is hashed and we have the hash and these are the leaves of the tree okay these are the leaves now what is the procedure for building a Merkle tree is that this is a binary tree remember this so we have two either we, we don't have any child or we have one or we have two right not more than that so we have to combine these two concatenate these two hash and then do SHA-256 hash the result will be hash of H of AB that is basically what we are doing we are doing SHA-256 hash of what concatenated hash values of H of A and H of B and the result goes here and the same way this applies to every you know transaction sets we just concatenate HCHD and do the SHA-256 hash the value is represented by HFCD the same goes for every other transaction that is here right so now finally if it, this is level 0 this is at level 1 now for level 2 you have to combine concatenate like H A B H C D and you have to do like this concatenation of H A B H C D and do the SHA-256 hash the result is represented by H A B C D the same goes here this will be SHA-256 of H E G H E F concatenated with H G H okay and the result is H of E F G H this is for simplicity actually this is 256 bits right 32 bytes hash value that we have seen in in cryptography hash video right so same goes here and same goes here at extreme right right so finally if we combine these two we get this one and we combine these two we get this one okay so finally when the level this is level 2 this is level 3 and finally we have level 4 
and we combine these two hash and the resultant is hash right h a b c d e f that is it's basically the representation of every transaction that was present that's why we say merkle roots uh, they, they help us to summarize all sort of data sets right that's transactions and 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 is just a representation for everything that is inside the block so this is called as merkle root okay so this you have seen in bitcoin blocks header this is merkle root this is basically a representation of every transaction that is inside the block okay now imagine if you want to check whether any particular transaction is present or or not in 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 a block right or in in a tree how you could verify and how merkle tree allows us to verify it effectively and in an optimized manner right now suppose you want to verify whether transaction k is there or not okay transaction k is there or not so we can easily calculate hash of k that is h of k okay then as part of the proof we have we have given the proof has h of l h of i j h of m n o p and h of a b c d e f g h okay so this is the path that is the merkle proof right for transaction k if this verifies then we will say that transaction k is present in that tree now we know h of k now because k is with us we can easily compute the hash of this then h of l is given if we concatenate h of k and h of l we will get h of k l and inside the proof we have h of j and with the result of concatenating with h of k l with h of i j we will get h of i j k l also inside the proof we have h of m n o p we can concatenate that with h of i k l and we get h of i j k l m n o p finally inside the proof we have h of a b c d e f g h and we can concatenate that with h of j k h of j k i j k l m n o p and the concatenation of these two after doing sha256 hash we will get h of a b c d e f g h i j k l m n o p right so that will be the root if that root if that hash comes out to be the same exactly this hash then the verification is true else the verification fails all right so so what's the big deal in this yeah of course there is a big deal because if you want to check whether any particular data element is present in a huge data set then it requires large amount of time to check that right suppose if it if, if suppose imagine that you don't have merkle tree right you have to verify whether that h of h of k h of k is present here you check that you check that you check that on in worst case you have to check all the n elements right n transactions that is 16 okay but with the help of merkle tree you have the path only holds four elements this one this one and the all that is represented by blue that is four elements are required for the path okay so what we can say that if you have if you have n elements or n transactions for the proof you require only log of n right if it is suppose we have 16 transactions that is that is it is equivalent to log of 2 2 to the power of 4 right this goes this and it is left only 4 that is you need only 4 elements to verify whether the transaction is present or not so instead of moving such huge data set in order to verify you only need small amount of data to verify whether the transaction is present or not so that is the reason those light clients and simplified payment verification protocol is able to create transactions without downloading whole of the bitcoin data right they just only you know have the headers only then with the help of this merkle root they can they they can just ask for the proofs from from the 
from the full nodes and they can verify whether the transaction is present or not so that is it for the theoretical explanation now we will see merkle tree in action okay now that we have gone through theoretical explanation on merkle tree we will see this in practice now we will take a simple example to demonstrate its functions first we need a javascript library merkle tree js which will help us to build the tree to get the proofs and to verify whether particular transaction is inside the tree or is inside inside the tree or not right so that that's like we will cover everything that we have seen in in theoretical explanation we will see this in practice now after that we require one more function that is cryptographic hash r256 because um, basically tree has the contents they, they are the sha256 hash of transactions right and they are then you know combined in a way to get a single root called as merkle root okay so after installing these libraries we can simply use them in our program now we are taking a simple example where we have eight transactions and in order to create the leaves of the tree we have to take hash of all the transactions that we want to include into the tree right so we have set of transactions eight in total and then we will use javascript's map function in order to you know iterate through all the transactions and apply sha256 of on each of them and get back the result in leaves also then we are doing console log in order to see what is inside the leaves right finally we will go to the step 2 in order to build a tree we need leaves right and cryptographic hash function which we are going to use so basically that is sha256 for bitcoin right so for creating a tree we just need to initialize you know the object of merkle tree and pass leaves and sha256 as its parameters and with the result that we will get a tree inside tree we we should have all sort of you know hash at different levels right in order to view that we will do console log again in order to see the contents of the tree once the tree is built we can get the root out of it in order to see what is actually sitting at the top of the root right that we can use simply from you know if we use get root function of of the tree then it will simply display the root itself now this is the process of creation of merkle tree but actual use of merkle tree is in verification because we can verify a transaction out of thousands of transactions in a very very less time amount of time so for that we have to pass certain parameters into the tree that is we require proof we require root right so for getting proof we have to first prepare the hash of the transaction that we need to get the proof right we, we suppose we want to get a proof for transaction one we have to get the hash of transaction one so how we can do that simply we have to use of 256 on that transaction here we are we are just you know we just need to get hash of transaction and one that is we want to just verify whether this is present inside inside the block actual sense in in bitcoin if we talk about that but here we just want to see if if we get a proof for it and then we will try to use that proof to verify whether this was really present there or not okay inside the leaves so to get the proof you simply can just invoke a function get proof from the tree and you have to pass of course the transaction hash for which you want to get the proof so here we are passing this leaf that is actually the transaction one hash and we will get the proof in return and in order to view that proof we are doing console log again finally we will try to verify it for verification we will simply invoke verify function of the tree and pass our proof the transaction hash for which we want to verify and the root itself or the tree if proof is correct then this will return true if proof is incorrect this will return false okay so let's let's do this by running this program and we can do that by going to the terminal and we can hit right we can hit node and the file name dot js extension okay so here we go so finally if we go to the last thing that is it returns true that means our proof is fine but we will go from top so first this is our 
uh, set of leaves right for the root then when we create the root we get this kind of a structure so how you can interpret this basically these are the level zero things right you will get though that these are like eight transaction hashes and they are the same if you look at this one the first one 775d5 you will get the here 775 775d5 then after that a3f7 a3f7 and following this this will be in in the lowest level right then we combine these two and produce the intermediate hash so this one is by combination of these two this one is by combination of these two this one is by combination of these two and finally this one is the combination of these two in turn these two are combined to get this one these two are combined to get this one and finally these two are combined to get the root right so we have the root hash now so we have also displayed the root itself in order to verify whether the root is correct or not our root is 855e9 if we go here 855e9 so root is absolutely correct right now the proof for this right for proof for for it for transaction one hash so it it, it gives you the following level of you know hash right from level zero you will get something from level zero level one and level two if we see the first thing we get a3 f7 okay a3 f7 so it's from level one level zero a3 f7 so we need this because this we know right because we want the proof for this so we can do and combine and get this one now we need something more right so next thing we get caa3 caa3 that is this one if we know this one and we have calculated this one we can get this one now we need one more thing what we need this one if we know this one we can combine this one and this one and get this and once we get the root we can compare it with the root that we have passed to the verification process if they are same it returns true if they are not same it returns false now what we can do we can pass uh, something different here right if we if we pass like a uh, transaction 9 that is not there right so it should obviously return false for that right here we go there is nothing there is no proof for that but it has returned false that means this transaction is not in the set of transactions from which we have built the route so that is it as part of the practical demonstration for Merkle trees if you like the content hit the like button on the YouTube video and do subscribe to the channel